So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a drag and drop exercise. This particular drag and drop is where we're going to label the structures of this ancient theater. And so I have some terminology um, up here at the top from Dr. Burns' Ancient Greek Theater Lecture. And you can see when I click on one, like Skene, and drag it, um, there are these little boxes that show up in different areas of the scene where I have choices of uh, where to drag it and, and label the structure. So I know this is the stage, so I'll just drag it there on top of the stage. The theatron is actually the audience's space, so I'll drag it to the corner. The orchestra is where the chorus sings before the play. And Parados is a side entrance. It's really hard to see here, but there's a little narrow entrance between the stage and the, the audience seating. And then I check my answers and see that I got full points. So I'll show you how to create this type of labeling drag and drop exercise. So where did I get the image for this? And, and where can you guys look for your images? Um, for this particular example, I actually found a 360 video of Leptis Magna, an ancient theater in uh, Libya, and that was on YouTube. But I'm going to ask you guys, you can do a search on images.google.com. And if I type in Leptis Mag, you may not be this specific. You may not know the particular theater that you would want or the particular name of the image you would want. But you could type in something like Ancient Greek Theater and see what comes up. I'm going to type in Leptis Magna for this particular photo I used. And let me go to Tools and Usage Rights up here in the middle and select labeled for reuse. Okay, so here I see there's this, um, my image on the far left and it's within commons.wikimedia.org. This is a good place to find public domain and um, images that where the author or photographer allows you to reuse and remix. So I simply right clicked on it to open the file and I can go to visit right here to visit the page that it's on. If I scroll down under the photo, it tells me, it gives a description of it, the ancient Roman theater at Leptis Magna. We know the Romans stole everything from the Greeks, so it would um, still work for uh, subject matter for like an ancient Greek theater. Um, to label structures if it's similar enough. And then the date that it was taken and the name of the photographer, Davy Gunn, David Gunn. Uh, you want to include all this in the copyright information when you create the media or submit it at least through Blackboard so that we know, you know where you got your source and that you were able to use it. It says here, I, the copyright holder of this work, release this work into the public domain. This applies worldwide. So he's granting use for any purpose, which is wonderful for our project. So go to download sizes. And uh, 512 might be a little small. We could try like um, 1024 pixels. And if I click on that, it takes me to this page. There's no download button. But if most browsers, if you right click, you can save the image as and save it on your hard drive somewhere where you know you can find it again. Right here I've already saved it. I'll click save at the bottom. It's asking me if I want to replace. I just say yes. Okay, so that will come into our Pressbooks site when we set up our drag and drop. Okay, so now we're ready to set up our H5P drag and drop exercise. We're back in our book, which is Introduction to Theater Learning Resources. And I located that under the catalog and simply by clicking on the name of the book that I wanted to get to. I'm going to go down to H5P content on the lower left and I can view all or I can click add new. 
Okay, so I'm going to call this uh, drag and drop practice, but you should pick a name that represents your subject matter, such as um, label the structures of this ancient Greek theater or this ancient theater. So for the content type, you click the drop down and it's right here at the top, but if it's not, you can scroll through all the types of content that's available to you. And there's quite a bit. And find the correct one. Pick the blue button that says Use next to drag and drop. And I'm going to set my, um, my image here where it says Background Image. I'll click the Add button. I'm going to go to my file and click Open. Okay, so it says edit copyright information. I am going to put that in to make sure that I do this according to what the photographer wants. So I know this is Leptis Magna, and our author was David Gunn. He was the photographer. He took it in 2006. Uh, for the source, I'm going to jump back to my... Um, the page where I found this image here. I'm just going to copy this URL at the top by selecting it, right clicking and saying copy. You can also do control C on your keyboard. Um, so let me go back here where I'm setting up my drag and drop in Pressbooks and do control V to paste it in. And he made this public domain so that's what I'm going to choose from this licensing list here. You know, some authors, maybe they made their attribution, you know, you have to you credit them. You should credit anybody where you find their resource. Um, Non-commercial and share alike, or even if it says no derivatives, we probably shouldn't be using it here. But we'll keep going. Okay, so when I'm done with that, I'll close out of this copyright window. Now, task size. This I like to match the image size, and I know this image was 1024 pixels wide. But um, if you, when you, after you download it, if you select it on a Windows machine, it'll tell you down at the bottom of the screen the dimensions of the image. So it's 1024 pixels wide by 676 pixels high. I'm going to use that here for my task size, so I can make use of the full area. Okay, so as before uh, in the other types of H5P that you're setting up, you can leave these defaults like overall feedback. I, I don't mess with that. Behavioral settings it has to do with the types of buttons that they provide. I typically leave these set to their default. You can take a look at them if you want. There's a way to change the labels on the button if you think the audience isn't getting what the the actual button name means. I just leave these alone and I'll go on to the next step which is tasks. There's a button for it at the bottom or you could click the tab at the top. Okay so it's very important the order in which you create your drop zones and your labels and then you have to go back and associate the correct drop zone with the correct label. Um, and it tells you at the bottom below the image where to start. It says start by placing your drop zone. So this little target button right here, if I select it, I can create a drop zone one. I'll call it zone one. And the opacity, I don't want it to completely obscure the picture. So I'll set that to 60% so you can see through it to the background. And this drop zone can only contain one element. That's important because there's only one label for each zone that's correct. I click Done. Okay, so it just places it in the middle. I'm going to make this my stage. So I'll drag it out here. You can see these little handles on the side that you can click and drag to resize it. Okay, so now I'm going to go up at the top click the insert drop zone button again, create a zone 2, 
set the background opacity to 60% and check off the box for this drop zone can only contain one element and click done. Okay, so it created it up here in the middle. I'm going to put this in the orchestra. This is going to be my orchestra label. You may want to try to keep them the same height and roughly the same size if possible so that uh, people um, don't associate certain sizes with certain drop zones. You, you want them to actually know what the structure is called. I'll insert a zone 3. Background opacity 60%. This drop zone can only contain one element. I click Done. Drag it over to where my audience sits. Okay, and I'll do one last one here called Zone 4. And this will be our Parados, that little side um, aisle where the orchestra the people who are the orchestra come in to do the singing. So it's kind of narrow. It's it's between the audience and the stage. And it's a, it's a very narrow passage, but it's in there. It's in the photo. Um, so I'll do that. I'm just going to click off of it on the blue sky and then go up to this text label and create my first one, which will be the stage, the skinny. And where it says select drop zones, here's where you could get confused. You know it's your zone one, but you really want to tell the, the audience that they could select any of the zones. So, so go ahead and select all. So all are a possibility to drag skin it onto. I'm going to set the background opacity to 60. And I'm going to click done. Okay, so we want our labels up here in the blue sky. And let me narrow it down a bit and draw it out a bit. Okay, so I'm going to have four labels going across here. I'll create my next text label, which is the orchestra. And select all zones are a possibility for dragging it into because, you know, we want to give them the opportunity to mess up and, and learn. Um, okay, so I'll narrow this down. Draw it out. Okay, so I'm trying to make things roughly the same size. They don't have to be perfect, but if I can get them all going across the top here, and then I'll rearrange. Okay, so the next one will be my Theatron. I'm going to select all zones as a possibility to drag to. Set the opacity to 60% and click Done. Drag Theatron up to the top. Try to match its sizing with the other ones. Okay, space it out somewhat. And my last label is going to be Parados. And I'm going to select all zones as a possibility to drag to. Set the opacity to 60. Click Done. Try to make it this roughly the same size as here. Drag them over. So you could get you can get really tedious trying to align these things perfectly, but um, if you can get them roughly the same size, that's good. Okay, so we have our our drop zones, we have our text labels. Now the last step is to edit your drop zone again and check off the correct answers. So I go back to my drop zone one, which I know is skinny. I double click it and I go into this editing screen and it says select correct elements. I'm gonna select the top one, the text skinny. Okay, I'm not gonna add feedback on this one. I'm just gonna click done because I set up that first association. Here's the orchestra's drop zone. I'm gonna select it, double click to go into editing select orchestra as the correct element and click done. I'm going to go to my next drop zone which is the theatron. Select it, 
double click it, select the text Theatron, click Done. Go to my last drop zone, which is our Parados, select the text Parados, and select Done. Okay, so I've got my associations in. Now I'm going to go up to the top, and don't miss this little red Create button up here at the far upper right. It's just an oddity of WordPress and WordPress-based content management systems such as Pressbooks. Hit Create. Okay, now is your chance to practice and see if it works. So I'm going to dra drag Skinna to the stage, orchestra to where the course sings here in the orchestra, and I'm going to drag, let's, let's do something incorrect and see what happens. Let's drag the Theatron to where the Parados would usually be, and drag Parados to where Theatron should be. And when the wheel stops spinning, there we go, I'll hit check. Okay, so it picked it up. We know we set it up correctly. Um, you can try to refresh the window and, and hope that it goes back, but it doesn't. So if you want to practice again, you just kind of drag your labels back up to the sky. And they go back, they snap into place. Okay, so now if I do this correctly this time, Okay, let me check it, and I got full points. So there you go. That's how to set up a drag and drop.